Okay, welcome to part two of the Chaos Defiler build. I'm feeling a little bit better, uh, almost over this cold. There's a few nurglings running around. Get to the false emperor! Quiet you. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. Uh, just like the, uh, the Chaos uh, Knight build, I'm adding a few more pieces to it because I don't know when to stop. I just uh, decided I'm gonna add a few more tentacles and make it look a little bit more nurgly and uh, just have some more fun with this thing. And in the end, I love the way it turned out. Uh, just using some uh, super glue gel works best with the, uh, with the green stuff there. And then the activator, uh, I'm not spraying it on there because I sprayed it and hit, hit my hand one time, it felt really weird. I just pull it out of the bottle and, and just dab it with the little straw applicator. No problems there. And then uh, after that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, let all that stuff dry so we can get ready for our priming. But yeah, these uh, these little nurglings, they are running around here. I'm Like I said, I'm not 100%, but we're going to make it through this. <laughs> okay, I went back and uh, turned on my microphone. It was a little uh, a little too too much on the on the gain for that uh, first segment there, but let's get back into it. Uh, hitting it with the uh, the whole piece with the Steinal Res Black Primer. You guys who have watched this in the past, you know this is my go-to primer. I love this stuff. Uh, plus, using it through the airbrush, you've got more control over it. And you can get into all those little undercuts and nooks and crannies and get everything all all primed up. And I like I, I like uh, using the black on this because I've got a lot of uh, a lot of darker colors I'm going to be using with this figure. The uh, yeah figure it's more of like a big model, but uh, it's really happy the way this turned out and I've got so many ideas for my next one that I want to do I think on the next one I'm going to cover way more of the areas with those uh, pustules and just make it look really really sick so it's just the base is done there or the base part of it getting the top portion with the turret and it's fun to see how when you prime these how all that green stuff just blends right into the uh, the actual model makes it look like it's actually a part of it there we go yeah this was a really fun build and I think with the next one I'm gonna actually like bring those two front arms up like it's attacking but yeah a lot of conversions on this one had so much fun with it the oil drums came out exactly how I wanted it to I mean there's a big oil drum in the original there we go two thumbs up there there was a big oil drum in the original video that I paid homage to by with this build but I didn't go that far all right we're going in with some rhinox hide here this is going to give the uh, the base color a lot of uh, a lot of the rusting is going to be built off of this so I'm just going to give everything that uh, that should be rusty uh, a nice coat of this rhinox hide the rhinox hide it's, it's a really good base for rust to begin with and you're just going to build up in layers after this as I drip it all over my uh, my piece of card there. All right, Citadel Air Lead, lead Belcher. Uh, just doing an overall wash. This is gonna get into all those little nooks and crannies and give a little bit of a metallic feel to it. Uh, it's very watered down, so it's gonna be extremely transparent when it dries. Now I'm just gonna wipe off a little bit of it because I don't want it to actually transform into that full color looking good nice base for uh, starting to uh, rust it up yeah this is uh, this is one of those pieces that uh, I just once I start start working on it I just was like yeah let's uh, let's keep on going let's see how far we can go with this the uh, that light up on top that, I don't think that it was uh, that made it into the last video, but I added that to it, and yeah, you'll see at the end what I do with that. All right, for the uh, 
The actual Death Guard colors, I'm using Rackarth Flesh for the, uh, the armor bits there. A couple of light coats on uh, each of the armor bits. And then I also do that on the, uh, the, like the skin and pustules, just to give it a good base to, uh, to build up colors for that. Try to be as neat as I can with those. Uh, I, I go back with the Rhinox hide just to clean up the areas on the uh, on the armor plates on those uh, on all the trim there. And there's a there's a decent amount of trim. Now some of those pustules you see uh, some of the Rhinox hide coming through. Now I'm not too worried about that because those are going to get at least three colors and three colors a wash and a technical paint right after that. Uh, flash gets yellow for those oil drums. I was debating what color I wanted to use on those and just ended up with the yellow. Yeah, before the video is completely done, I'm going to have so much fun with those oil drums just to make them all sick and nasty looking. But you always see oil drums in 40k, so I figured I'd have some fun with it. There we go, looking good. You get the other one, and they are complete. Well, completely base coated that is okay next uh, moving on to some Citadel Iron Warriors I just want to get a few uh, few metallic pieces kind of highlighted in there just so it doesn't look completely disgusting and rusty well I figure I figure that uh, some of it should look like it's still usable Okay, going in with some thinned down Averland Sunset. This is just going to uh, give a little bit of a wash to those those drums. And for the most part, I pretty much use the wet palette for a lot of this, a lot of the paint job on this figure. And it darkens up a little bit, and I'm still going to add more to it. There we go. Hey, at this time I want to thank all the new subscribers since our uh, since the last video came out. I was shocked to see how many people subscribed after that last one. So, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, getting back to the build, back to Iron Warriors. I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, give a nice base coat to all those uh, those knives and big blades that are sticking out of the uh, the armor plates there. Uh, I'm going a little choppy on this one because I'm going to add rust effects to it and instead of putting typhus corrosion over the whole thing, I just decided to stipple on the paint at full strength, not thin down. And I'm getting um, all, the, uh, all the claws, all the blades. Now some of them do have some typhus corrosion on there, which you did not see, but it is on there. I think I was showing off that barrel again. Love those barrels. Okay, and you can actually see the typhus corrosion underneath that iron warriors there. The typhus corrosion gives a nice base for the uh, the additional rust effects to like kind of bite onto and hold onto. So I do I do use it. I mean, but like I've said before, it will kill your brushes. Speaking of killing brushes, these aren't the best brushes, but that one's a little bit better for the, uh, the copper accents. That's uh, Citadel Hash Hut Car Copper. I know those Death Guard uh, pauldrons usually have uh, some copper accents to them, so I wanted to do the same thing on the armor plates here. There we go. And there's, uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, accents that I add to these because eventually you get the rust effects, you get the verdigris effects put on there too. So I just wanted to give it a little bit of color so you could see a tinge of that copper there. Just a tinge. You don't get the chance to use the word tinge that, that often. And we can't forget about the, uh, the turret section either. So going in and getting that all taken care of. There we go, starting to come together. Now I'm just gonna add a few little copper accents here and there. 
Moving on to Citadel Contrast Basiliconum Gray. This is a technique that I got from Danny when we were, he and I were doing the, uh, the Gazgul build. Uh, he likes to use Basiliconum Gray as a black filter. Uh, in fact, he likes to uh, likes to use this a little bit more than uh, the Null Oil for uh, for applications. So I figured I would try it out, and you know what? I really like the results. So just uh, get a nice nice layer of that. It's thinned down just a little bit because I didn't want to go full strength, but uh, that's pretty much the effect that I wanted. Just that nice oily effect on top of it. All right, this is the one that I really liked here. Citadel Shade Mortarian Grime. Uh, this is what gives the uh, that armor, that almost 30K type look to it. It's uh, the Rackarth Flesh with the Mortarian Gray, or Mortarian Grime, I'm sorry. Uh, gives it a little bit of a greenish tinge to it. Not too much, and I actually end up using two coats of it because some parts looked a little bit too light, but it looks so good. I think I'm going to be uh, doing all my 30k Death Guard with that uh, with that same uh, color scheme. All right, going into another contrast paint here. Back to the oil barrels, the uh, the big drums there. Uh, Skeleton Horde. And this is going to just weather it up a little bit, give it that dirty, grimy look to it. And I'm going full strength with this one. And honestly, if it if it uh, dries with a little bit of that coffee staining effect I'm okay with that all right another contrast uh, gullman flesh this is gonna go on the uh, on the fleshy bits and this is gonna get two coats because the first coat is just not that strong now I did not thin that down at all there's your second coat right there and I like the way that's turning out I'm going to get some on those tentacles as well. And there's a tentacle that I still have to uh, get some Rackarth flesh on because I missed it. All right, uh, Vallejo. Uh, Vallejo Wash. This one is light rust. I've used this one in the past before. Really, really nice product. Uh, you don't have to thin this down at all unless you really want to. Uh, it dry is pretty transparent but you get a nice uh, nice rust effect just want to get all that underbody there or that no sorry not the underbody the uh, the main body yeah this one's got a lot of a lot of rusty elements to it Okay, then we're going to get some of that uh, Vallejo wash on the blades as well, as, and the uh, also on some of those moving parts there. For the blades, we're just stippling it on there. Rusting is one of my favorite things to do on these, especially these Death Guard figures. Well, the Defiler is pretty much cast Space Marines, but he's... He's been blessed by Grandfather Nurgle, so. Okay, nice rust on there. Because we want to give our enemies lockjaw. And you can't see what I'm doing because I'm out of frame. Yeah, I gotta work on that, I'm sorry. Getting those little pieces of uh, chain rusted up there. There's also a few hooks that uh, that got rusted up. All right, uh, sponging some Citadel Scrag Brown. This is another layer of rust, so we're just gradually building up. And there's really no rhyme or reason as how to how I'm doing this. I'm just hitting it where the uh, the high points are uh, for the most part, and just going in and having a lot of fun with it. weapons too and then we're moving on to fire dragon bright like I said this is gonna be uh, we're gonna layer up the colors and bring up those colors too, make them brighter and brighter
Just like in layers of an onion. And there's a spot of the flesh that I missed, so I'll go back later and take care of that. Alright, Vallejo Flat Earth. This is where I'm going to start the uh, start base coating all those little pustules. And believe me, I'd rather paint the, uh, the balls on a Dalek skirt than do all these pustules. But, had to be done, so the next coat is Averland Sunset by Citadel. Now, that went straight on. I didn't thin that out because it was too see-through when I uh, when I thinned it. But I get all those pustules and then a Citadel shade of Fugan Orange. Yeah, I didn't realize how much work I was going to put, put into those pustules when I first started this project. And I never realized how many times I was going to say the word pustules. Okay, and then a little bit of Fugan Orange on the rust spots as well. Like I said, I'm really layering that stuff up there. All right, uh, another contrast color, Gut Rip of Flesh. I wanted to uh, have some nice green tubes full of ooze going into the head of the defiler, as well as some of it coming out of the uh, uh, the tubes and the on the drums. Some nice staining effects there, and then I just wanted to drip some down the uh, the front because I'm sure they don't take the best care of their stuff there. All right, drilling out the uh, not well, I drill out the barrels too, but I'm drilling out the exhaust ports on uh, on the defiler, as well as these, those gun barrels, and then I get down to our dirty down rust. So crusty, rusty. Love this stuff. Get some dirty down on the blades as well. And then I do knock some of it back with a little bit of water because there were some pretty hard edges. Get the chains, get the hooks, and the back banner. Can't forget about that. And then Technical Citadel, Nurgle's Rot, Citadel Technical Paints. These things are amazing and you gotta love Nurgle's Rot. It goes on that, that green slimy color and it dries clear. It looks like just somebody blew their nose all over your model. And if that's the effect you want, that's the effect you're gonna get. So yeah, I'm just adding here and there trying to get all those pustules done up and I probably could have just just painted the whole section but I wanted to do each individual one okay it's tesseract glow I want to make those a little bit brighter so that's a really nice color for that and then the Nalek oxide this is a favorite of mine for uh, for verdigris, for getting that bluish green patina on your uh, on your copper pieces. Uh, it does dry a little clearer than what you're seeing right there, so I didn't have any problems if I went a little heavier on there. Okay, for the, for the fleshy bits, we're doing some Bugman's glow. All those little tentacles there. See those exhausts were drilled out. Fun times. Yep, Nurgle is pustules and tentacles. All right, I put some chain on these uh, these two hooks, and then just hold it in place with some uh, liquid CA. And give it some dirty down rust to uh, to grime it all up there. Yeah, it was moving all over the place. I had to hold it in place with my finger and rust it up my finger as well. That's okay. All right, we're gonna start the glow effect on the uh, to that top headlamp, the headlight there. Starting with Corax white, just through the airbrush. 
And then I'm uh, topping that off with some Tesseract Glow. It's a really nice color for this. And then we're gonna add some Flash Gets Yellow to it. And I'm gonna slowly move it to uh, either side. I don't want to completely cover the head or cover the inside area, but I just want a little bit of a glow off of that. Okay, now it's at the bottom of the screen. You can barely see it, but I'm hitting it with the uh, titanium white ink right there. I'm sorry about the camera skills. Still an amateur here. Okay, we're going to finish this up with the uh, Abad in Black on the exhaust ports. Final reveals coming up. Like, comment, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Hey, if you like the video, check out part one on the left-hand side. Subscribe on the right. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.